So, episode four. Last time I kind of introduced this exercise, which you still see on the screen. And I mentioned that you could really use any song that you're familiar with to practice this dominant harmony improvisation. So, for example, You could actually do those last four notes. With that same harmonic structure. Soprano, soprano, subdominant S, tonic, dominant tonic, except now for the twinkle twinkle. Let's grab the pencil here. We'll have, you know, let's say different key. Slightly different notes, but same exact idea. So let's get rid of all this. Uh, like for instance, for you know, you would draw these guys C for our new tonic, so dominant on C. I uh, got the tonic notes, right? All this stuff, and the dominant would be based on the leading tone right below C, and then tonic again, and of course you you know the music F F E, and then we get to D. That dominant could be our improvisation moment, and then final C. So for instance, change one note. Not much of an improvisation, but something. Played around, what about? Right, and then last C, I played a couple of different Cs. So, like I said, this exercise, which just allows you to explore a little bit within a pretty, you know, formal structure, uh, can be another way to exercise and improvisation skills. But so back to how I choose to improvise, I guess. Let's say I start with this dominant chord in the, in the key of C major. And let's just say I want to be all about C major. I'm not even going to use any black keys. I know my tonic is C. And I started like this. Now that to me already communicates, ooh, something a little bit unstable because I didn't start like this, right? I started, okay, and, and then it's not fast because I'm just letting it hang in the air. So already my mind is sort of racing through libraries of all the music I know, you know, the, the sort of process. And then my right hand might want to come in with its melody to create this kind of for even more unstable sound. And then maybe this creates this idea of recitative, right? This idea where we have... You know, just simple harmonies while the, in opera the singer tells some story. So suddenly I'm doing that. from dominant to tonic, right? So already, just from one single chord randomly pressed, my mind is racing through all the associations that this sound in a particular context, all in my mind, um, is, is able to um, go through, right? It's just kind of racing through, through what, what else can I do with this sound? Okay, but also, I can do this thing that I seem to like to do, which is create contrasts. Um, you know, suspended, no motion, uh, you know, what's going to happen next. And then suddenly I'm bringing in this pulse. Okay, then I can go back to this chord, just hang in there. All right, and again, this can be at the beginning of something completely different. It could also be in the key of C, I'm still let's say, mentally committed to white notes only with C 
C being the main note. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's let's see what happens. So a little bit of an elaboration on this simple idea of a suspended harmony, some rhythmic pulses. All of this um, can either result in an interesting five minute piece, or I might lose inspiration and it'll just be sort of a promising beginning with something boring afterwards, right? With improvisation, the brain really has to work pretty hard for things to work out. So, um, to summarize, right? So we talked about just letting go of this idea of playing any specific notes, but focusing on uh, advancing the idea of rhythm, the pulse, and letting everything else be what it is. And we talked about harmonic exploration. changing different notes, seeing what kind of sound I get out of these different harmonies. Uh, then we did this, talked about 4x4, four four, which just kind of combines the idea of rhythmic pulses and uh, the feeling of the metric structure where you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and maybe trying to be a little more harmonically precise uh, at some point with a tonic note idea. So different ways to get started, different ways to play around. I don't know, I just always allowed myself to explore, always wanted to make my own music. Sometimes, you know, when you improvise and, and, and this something strikes you as, oh, I'd really like to work on this. Well, that, that's when, fine, you know, you, you, you start writing these things down. Uh, whatever they might might be and that's how composition works you kind of go from just playing around and working with your working memory to literally putting ideas on paper you know okay I like these notes and then elaborating on what else you could do with them a lot of improvisation want to take that G as my tonic and suddenly I am adding harmony like this, right? So that to me improvisation is sort of the focus of everything your brain knows. But how do you get your brain to know? Well, you practice piano, you learn pieces, you maybe try to compose something on your own. So all these things that I would imagine definitely made me into what I am today, right? And so if improvisation is interesting to you, uh, why, why not try those kinds of things? But I think the more important thing is when you're not performing improvisation for an audience and when you're just practicing ideas, try crazy things. Literally, don't, don't uh, limit yourself. And then you limit yourself. And then once you kind of explore what's possible, you say, okay, now just these notes that I wrote down. very limited you're trying to make the best out of the situation you know if life gives you lemons you make lemonade or whatever so um, yeah that that would be an example of how I choose to improvise I go with something and then if I somehow decide that I want to work within a particular context I just stay with that context it's a personal decision and I think it I, I make that decision for a reason, but I might be wrong, it might be a gamble, and it might not always pan out. But um, yeah, so how, how to improvise, how I choose to improvise, all these things are sort of part of improvisation anyway.
Here's the blank slate. Here's a cluster. Here's another cluster. And there is a pseudotonal melodic shape. More clusters. Another melodic shape. Right, so I already have a pattern. I did something, I did this, then I have this. And now I want to keep working with this material. So what do I do? I imitate, I repeat, but not exactly. And now the music already has this context of like 10, 15 seconds. And I work with that context. I guess that's kind of as simple as it is. Now, let's just say again, go, going back to C major only. I know my tonic, I know my subdominant, I know my dominant chords. Let's say I do nothing else but play one of those in my left hand. And for some strange reason I decided to do this stupid rhythm. Well, since I committed to something a little more traditional, I'm going to stay with this rhythm, I'm going to add the right hand, I'm going to do something. Now, at some point, if I want to rescue this improvisation out of something very predictable, or at least what I consider predictable, I'm going to maybe do some, something crazy in, in either with the rhythm, or maybe the, the right hand will do something. But, uh, yeah, it's sort of almost like there are if you first allow anything to happen then you put in severe limits and then you kind of expand from those limits and then maybe you contract again so it's this living organism that your brain creates on the spot and you hope that this organism creates interest in music to listen to but um yeah i, I don't know um I was exploring with some other C major chords by just moving one thumb over and creating what's known as the submedian harmony. But again, the names, no in theory is obviously a great, uh, I guess, extra ability if you're a musician, but I think the only time theory, no in theory is going to be helpful if you can literally play it. If you don't know how to name something, it doesn't matter as much as feeling the sound, understanding what kind of, you know, things work with that sound, what kind of things don't. And any of one of those white notes could potentially work with this. probably work with this harmony too but it's interesting how I repeat or I gravitate towards certain notes isn't it right, I'm being traditional so therefore I'm gravitating to the notes that are part of this harmony instead of It's a little more modernist, maybe jazzy, I don't know what term you want to use. So then, then I go with that kind of sound or... I don't know, maybe a little more like Stravinsky here. Anyway, there, there, are, there are countless possibilities depending on your stylistic preferences. And I guess at some point, I don't know if it's going to be the next episode or or not, but I definitely do want to go into this idea of styles, right? Choosing a style to improvise in uh, or compose music in or listen to music of a certain style and how that can be possibly used as part of improvisational exploration. Anyway, for until next time, leave me any comments, any questions. I'd love to know what you think.